Shalom everyone, welcome to this channel again and once again thank you to everyone who supports this channel. The last time I shared with you the seven festivals of our Creator found in Leviticus chapter 23 and its significance and we found out that the three of those festivals are uh, actually the seventh of them uh, shadows what our Messiah have done for us. The three of those festivals are the things that will happen or happened already before his coming and the other three will take place when he comes. Uh, the three of that, the first one, the Passover shadows with what he done for us, redeeming us from our sins. And then the second festival is uh, the one he shows us how to live life, that we should live life without blemish or without sin, fine and pure, and we should live by his word. And the third of that is gathering his people. And then the fourth is the festival that is uh, found in uh, no, Matthew 24 that uh, tells us when his coming will be. And the third of those are the festivals that will happen or will take place after he comes and that is the judgment day, the, the millennium, the 1000 years and then the eternal life. And with that I would say that those festivals should be keep, should be rehearsed, should be put into practice because those are the perfect, the complete plan of our Creator for our salvation. Opposite to the teaching of the world that is the, the world that is guided by the fourth empire who rose on earth, the Roman Empire who changed the laws. So I believe that should be key. Now today I'm going to share with you a timely topic and I don't want to name this virus anymore because I don't need to because for certain you already know the name of it. Sometimes even irony that if I gonna ask you what is the name of our creator, greater chance you'll give me a lot of names. But if I gonna ask you what is the name of the virus that devastating our world today for certain i'll just get one name and that's irony the first time when i hear that virus somewhere two days if i remember it right or a day after we made this youtube channel and it's two days after i heard from iliadakum shabbat broadcast that there is a sister from the land of china asking for a prayer request because of their situation there suffering maltreatment from the government of China because of our form of worship, worshiping the Hebrew name of our Creator. And so if you watch my videos here, if uh, I've used that in my second video, and then so that's my first reaction when I first heard that virus. And then later on, as I learned that that virus also uh, infected or devastated should I say even unto the nations where there are worshippers of our creator in Hebrew name like Philippines my country and here in the United States then I began to ponder if this is but just a fulfillment of the prophecies that not yet fulfilled in our scriptures so we try to check on the book of Hashan or Revelation then we also try to check Matthew 24 and then also the book of 2 Thessalonians or because the thing that I'm really looking forward for the fulfillment upon the coming of our Messiah is the man of sin that is mentioned in 2 Thessalonians and I'm expecting that that man of sin will go on to sit on the, the third temple that will be built in the the set apart land of Israel because of the book that Second Thessalonians it says there that he will go to set in the throne in the set apart place or the land of Israel. So I keep asking my husband if the, the temple was already built, but then he said not yet. And so somehow with that I I able to 
my my word that I said in one of my video was strengthened when I say that let these things thrill us with excitement because these are the signs that our groom is coming and we are a bride and we should be thrilled with excitement knowing that our groom is coming. But then when I learned that these virus are attacking or should we say those who have a weak respiratory system are the one who is prone to have this kind of disease and I remember that uh, I am one of those people who have this weak respiratory system. In fact, I was treated with pneumonia way back 2013 and I guess this is an inheritance should I say. My brother, my father, my grandfather, my cousin, my uncle have this kind of weakness should we say. We have a weak respiratory system. And so I feel worried and I feel sad much more when I learn that the, was the, this the the flight or the the I, I don't know how to what's the right word to use the air flight or travel using airlines are already banned and so I really get sad and worried. Why? Because if there's a place that I wanted to spend the time of the fulfillment of that what we see in the in the book of Revelation or Hashan that's marking of the beast. I want to spend the time in my country Philippines for these three reasons should I say. First is the climatic conditions. Uh, we can plant crops there and we can harvest that all throughout the year because we don't have winter there. Second thing is familiarity. Uh, I quite am quite familiar with our place. I know where to look for herbs. I know where to look for water in case time on when we can buy anymore without having the mark of the beast. And lastly, I would say the simplicity of life. Uh, here, most of our sustenance, should I say, is technology based. We can cook food without our gas tube. Uh, in my country, you can cook without the thing. You just need some firewood. And then you can even create your own fire using bamboo and I know how to do that. So that's the reason why that I want to spend the time if in case that will happen already or that will take place already. I want to spend it in my country. So I was really sad and worried. I feel like I'm trapped in here and I don't know what is yes reason putting me here. But I could also see there's a lot of good things that happened to me here. Especially that I have my family here now, my little Zephania and my husband. And it's also in this place that he healed me from my huge brain tumor. And so I know he might have a good reason why I am here. And then, so as I realized, as I meditate, ponder on those things, I began to accept that if I want to hold on to eternal life, I need to learn to let go of these things that are temporary. Of course, I miss my family way back home. I want to be want to be with them, but life that we had now is just temporary. And if we want to hold for eternal life, we need to let go of these things because we are just temporary anyway. And then, as I meditate more deeper on the situation that we have now. I then began to see the beauty of it. I've seen that we are in the best time. You might disagree with me, but this is what I've seen. We are in the best time of for these three things to take place, and I gave them an acronym of LSR. L for learn. This is the best time to learn why we can get out. So this is the best time for us. We have all the time to learn to learn to prepare, to learn so our lamps would have oil and it will keep shining, it will keep burning like the five virgin in the ten virgins in somewhere in the, in the gospel. So we should be like that five virgins whose, all are, whose lamps are full of oil that it keep burning even to the darkest moment of, should I say, the day. And so with that, I would say that even in the darkest moment of the world that we live in, hope and pray that this time, the thing that we learn from this time will keep us burning up to the time, uh, 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 up 
this time, should I say, if we are now in the darkest moment of the world of our time, should I say. The second one is letter S and it stands for me to share. Another thing, by the way, we learn is this, uh, what's this thing? We should learn so we should have something to share and with share, I would say that uh, it's good thing that if time, if he will come at this time, he will find us working, right? Uh, so we can share if we don't have some, we, we don't learn something. So we need to learn so we have something to share and sharing is loving and sharing is working for his kingdom. So we need to share, we need to work. This is the best time, best time to work because people that work, can't go now to work so they have time to listen to us we just need to utilize our technology our internet so we can continue to share the work for his kingdom and lastly the reason for this video presentation of today and that is to raise a hallelujah or should we say to give a praise i've seen this that this is the best time for us to praise to raise a hallelujah might our creator have given this time for us because he couldn't see anymore that we are praising him because we are so busy with our work of our work of work of the world and so he has given us this time so we can praise him so in the judgment time we couldn't give him any reason anymore why we don't praise him why we don't work for him why we did not learn the thing that supposedly we should learn before his coming or should we say why we are not prepared for the judgment day and so agree with me or not but that's the, the beauty the thing that i've seen in our situation of today learn share and raise a hallelujah but then we can't raise a hallelujah if we don't understand that word and so for that reason let's check it out and find that out what is that hallelujah okay so the first thing that I'm going to ask to you is from what language is that word hallelujah derived from? For those who do not know, that comes from a Hebrew language. Okay, next thing. If that comes from a Hebrew language, what does it mean? Okay, what is the meaning of the word hallelujah? Since it comes from a Hebrew word. We need to look at it in a Hebrew language perspective. And Hebrew language has three characters, or should we I say it evolves. The character that is used as Hebrew letters evolves. So we have namely ancient Hebrew, Paleo Hebrew, and modern Hebrew. And among the three characters, I would say that it's the ancient Hebrew or the Moshe script that can best reveals the true, the real beauty of a Hebrew language. So I prepared here the word hallelujah written in an ancient Hebrew character or letter, should I say. Okay. Or should I hold it? I guess. Okay, let's do it this way. Okay. Remember that Hebrew language the writer letters from right going to left, okay, right to left. So this is the character or the letter or the ancient Hebrew letters used for the word hallelujah. As we can see here, we see a man raising his hand to praise and to breathe, okay. The next here we can see a shepherd's staff that is used to lead to guide a sheep and we have we seen here two shepherd staff and that i would say in the nature of hebrew language when you can see two words next to each other or should i say two letters it means the intensity is so strong like the word mini mini tika or parsing it's a strong intention of the meaning of the word mini and so that is also the thing that I've seen here. I've seen here a strong and intense direction. And we saw here a tent peg that is used to, to secure or to connect. It's used when we 
we set up a tent, a tent peg, and so this this brings the meaning of what you call secure, okay, or connect. And then we have here a right uh, arm, or should I say a hand, a hand that is used to work or to create or to hold. And then uh, once again, we have her letter H hey, that brings the meaning of praise and breath, okay? So this one carries the H and one L is because this is H, hey, that in English this is H, and this is a lamed, uh, that carries letter L and another L, and this, is, this carries the U, and this yod carries letter Y and hey. So we have here hallelujah. With the meaning that it brings, that it is the life or praise that is intensely directed and secured or connected to creator or the one who creates or hold the life or praise. So with that, I would say that the meaning of the word hallelujah is praise belongs or directed to yeah okay nice awesome right so hallelujah means a praise or a life that is intensely directed or should we say belongs to is intensely directed and secured or connected to the creator of life and praise or yeah or to yeah so praise belongs to yeah and yeah means the creator the holder of life and praise okay that's the beauty of the ancient hebrew language the next thing that i'm going to ask to you is this are your praise still belongs to yah okay i will leave the thing for you to answer but then here are a few things that i'm going to ask to you okay first thing is the word lord saying with yeah in here because this hallelujah should uh should this hallelujah means praise belongs to yeah okay so i'm going to ask you if your praise belongs to yeah or is lord saying with yeah okay now because there might be a chance that your praise belongs to Lord anymore. You, you already say praise the Lord and you're thinking that Lord and Yah is the same. So let's check it out if Lord and Yah is the same. Now, the word Yah is a Hebrew word, whereas the word Lord is an English word. If I'm going to liken that or compare that into mathematical words, it could be the other one is a fraction, like say, for example, one half, and the other one is in, per in percentage form, like say, for example, 50%. So we can clearly see, we can clearly compare it if we are not going to convert the other one. So, Yah is Hebrew, Lord is English. So what we're going to do is we are going to convert the other one into a form that we can clearly see them, okay? So, we are going to convert or translate the word Lord into Hebrew so we can clearly see if Yah and Lord is the same, okay? Using Strong's Concordance with number 1167, we can see that the equivalent or the Hebrew word for Lord is Baal with this spelling, okay? We have here death. This is a tent floor plan or a place to live in. And next, we have here the I. This is ayan that carries a sound. And then we have here lama that carries the L sound. This is the Hebrew word for Lord. This means Baal. With this, house, with this tent floor plan here or a house, we can see that the meaning of this is the house. You can see here house. And the eyes that we use to learn or to gain knowledge, and then lamed or the shepherd staff that brings the meaning of direction or guidance. So we can say that Lord in Hebrew, which is Baal, means that a house of knowledge of direction. Okay, so we can see here that 
the word owner because the owner okay the owner of the house is the one who can give us core knowledge should i say of an instruction or direction on how to use a certain thing and that is why we have if there's anyone who knows how to use the drugs drugs should i say it is the drug lord right so with that i would say that since the meaning of the baal which is the hebrew word for lord in english i would say that uh baal or lord is not the same word yeah because baal is, is an, a house of uh, knowledge and instruction whereas when i say yeah it means creator of life creator of life can be baal or lord but not all lord can be or owner should i say not all owner can be a creator of life and that is the reason why i would say that lord and creator of life is not the same and that is why i would also say that it's not rightful to say praise the lord another strong point for that is hoshea chapter 2 verse 6 there we can say that that verse will tell us that our creator tells the israelites which it could be you and me not to call him or should i say to call him is she or my husband that is a hebrew word for my husband instead of or he told us not to call him anymore my or, or should i say baali or my lord in english okay and then another question that we need to answer is is the is yeah in hallelujah and god the same now again we need to do conversion with that word god so in hebrew where our scripture is originally written what we can find there is not god what we can see there is elohim and as you can see the car the ancient hebrew character is used for that is an uh, uh, a character that shows an ox head a shepherd staff again a shepherd staff and a man raising his arm to praise or to breathe and then we have a hand and then a water and with that we can say with the meaning of this a strong or strength then this one direction and this life or praise and this one to hold or to create and this one is mighty or water or mighty should i say with that we can say that we can derive the word here mighty and supposedly elohim is should be properly translated as mighty and as god we can you can try to check it on your internet using google uh, try to check the relationship of god in the deity of fortune there you can see that the word god originate actually from the deity of fortune that is god and in leviticus chapter 23 supposedly we should avoid or should be very careful not to use that word because that is a name of a deity and once again i would say that uh our creator the creator of life is mighty but not almighty is is creator of life because any man can be mighty so with that i would say that uh god and creator of life or here is not the same and what's this mm. any man can be lord any man can be mighty but with when it comes to here which means creator of life no one can take that no man no man can be creator of life okay now let's move farther and how's about this word it's widely known as jehovah is jehovah uh same with yah or is he the same with creator of life let's check it out but before we are going to go farther with this thing i just would like to remind you that we are holding now 
a copy of our scripture that is just bad at trans translation, should I say. And I want to remind you that our scripture was first entrusted to the Hebrew speaking people, the Israelites. And thus, that, is, that was first written in Hebrew language. Then, after that, that was translated to Greek language. And then, that was translated, after it was translated to Greek, it becomes Latin language. It was translated to Latin language. And then, after the Latin language, that was translated to English language. So, it went to four languages. And so, there might be tendency that... And that's the reason, by the way, that, uh, should I say, the Lord and the word God and his Jehovah appears now in our scripture, which I would say it does not exist in the original copy of our scripture. Okay. Uh, what else? Mm. Okay, let's move about this Jehovah. Okay, let's check it out this Jehovah now. First, since our scripture was originally written in Hebrew language, I would like to let you know that if you are if you could have if you could find a time to check it out the, the Hebrew letters and its, and its English equivalent letters, there you will see that there is no such Hebrew letter with an English equivalent of letter J. And with that, I would say that Jehovah comes from Yehovah, okay? Why? Because there's no letter J in Hebrew language, okay? And with that, I would also say that this Yehovah, it comes from Yehovah. Why I say this? Because Yehovah is a product of the work of the Masorites changing the, the, the long uh, sound of the first of a Hebrew word that has a long uh, sound in its first syllable when a suffix is added. And that is why Yehovah becomes Yehovah. And I would like also to say that Yehovah comes from actually from the word Yahuwah. Why? Because if you try to check the history of this letter B, it comes from letter U. According to the book, What is Your Name? by Onel McQuick, this is a two Hebrew words joined together. This is the name of our creator, Yah, and the conjugated form of a Hebrew word, Hawa or Hava, because uh, they don't you the they are influenced by by these Jewish people who pronounce the wow into vav. That's why the sixth Hebrew letter was pronounced as a vav instead of wow. And that is why if you try to look at the word hawa, you can find it anymore unless you're going to look for the word hava with the spelling H a v a h and that means to be come to be come to pass okay okay and then the meaning of this word now is yeah can be what you wanted to be it becomes hua because the word hawa or hava is conjugated into hua or hava in the first person perspective because actually that is a declaration of our creator that he is Yah or should he say that I am Yah, I can be what I wanted to be. But the problem with this pronunciation, what should I say, is the definition of the Strong's Concordance that says that Hua means destruction and that's the reason why that I can't declare that this is the correct pronunciation of the four Hebrew letters that is found in the actual or the, the original writing of our scripture. Uh, I would say that this is understudy for me as of now, 
but I know this is not a hopeless case. I believe that Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 9 can help us with this problem. But as of now, I would say if you are going to ask me what is the name of our Creator, I would say that the name of our Creator is Yah if you are looking for His name and not the pronunciation of the, should I say, this four Hebrew letters which is uh, the, the name that we can see in the original copy of our scripture that become the base of the different pronunciation that the base of should I say this Jehovah some pronounce it Yahweh some pronounce it Yahweh some pronounce it Yahoo Yahuwah uh, I would say as of now that the should I say the uh, if I gonna rank that should I say the nearest or the closest would be the correct pronunciation of that would be Yahuwah but as I already said that is an understudy for me I need to find it out because the book of Bunel, Mr. McQuick should I say didn't provide any reference why he did he come up with that explanation that Huva or Huwa is uh, the the first person perspective of the word Hava or Hawa so I need to look for that in, in my next study and should I say that but if you're going to look once again the name of our creator I will declare that it is Yah but if you are looking for the pronunciation of these four Hebrew letters where this Jehovah comes from I would suggest that go on with learning of the Hebrew language which I'm trying to share with you in the next few days so go for that because I believe that the learning Hebrew language will can help us with our problem regarding this matter especially the the verbs the Hebrew verbs should I say and as of this moment I'm going to share with you the reason why I believe that the name of our Creator is Yah with these verses I hope you can see it that is in if I have it right Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 3 I'm just going to take the line there that that's that should I say strengthen my belief that the name of our Creator is Yah in the line that says I will proclaim some of the translation goes I will declare and it goes I will declare the name of this tetragrammaton or some whatever pronunciation you have for this or let me use this one too this is the nice one the ancient one the four Hebrew letters that where it comes up a lot of different pronunciation some pronounce it Yahweh some pronounce it Yahweh some Yehovah some Jehovah okay but here as you can see that these four Hebrew letters has a name according to this verse and it says I will declare the name of Yahweh if that is Yahweh so for me I don't know I hope you can see what I see but what I see in there is that Yahweh or Jehovah or Yahuwah or Yahweh has a name and for me for me his name is Yah and the, the proof the verse to prove that is here is on Psalm 68 verse 4 okay here is Psalm 68 verse 4 I will not read the whole thing but I'll just get the line where I found his name I don't know how your translations work with that but it is found in the phrase that says praise him by his name yeah clear right his name is yeah okay now what happened with what's this one okay what happened with this verse I believe is this if you can see in this verse in the scripture exodus chapter 3 verse 15 our creator wants us to remember this name these four hebrew letters why do you think i believe the reason for that that he wants us to remember his name i believe this name comes out from his name i believe his name is yah and out of his name yah comes this name that where this Jehovah or Yahweh or Yahweh or whatever pronunciation you prefer for this comes out. He wants us to remember this because of the beauty of the meaning of this name. 
Why? Because the meaning of this name, as I learn, as I understand, is this. Yah can be what he wanted to be. And because he is Yah that can be what he wanted to be, he become our Redeemer. And with that, I would say, without this name, we don't have hope for eternal life. And another beautiful meaning that this name has, that he wants us to remember this name is, he can be what he wanted to be. So in whatever circumstances that we face in this life, he can be what he wanted to be. He can be our healer. He can be our protector. He can be our provider. He can be, he can be our peacemaker. He can be what he wanted to be. So uh, for that reason, I would say that is a very great name our wisdom, our understanding, our time, our whatever we can see, whatever we can say, whatever we can hold is not enough to declare his beauty other than he is he can be what he wanted to be. Our numbers might not be enough to describe what he can be what he wanted to be, but the thing is for certain that for such a times like this when the world is facing a chaos, we can call unto his name and he can be what he wanted to be. Okay? And so I do hope that I shared something for you. Uh, another thing, by the way, the flowers in here reminds me that because Yah can be what he wanted to be, he becomes our Redeemer. And since he become our Redeemer, he give us redemption of our sin to give us hope for eternal life and I don't know it's amazing that he he chooses that our redemption time will fall on Passover and Passover falls on the 14th day of the the spring and the flowers here testifies that there is a life after death after death in the winter life the plants came into life in the spring and it's amazing that our redemption was made in the spring to remind us that there is life after death and i do hope that i'm able to share something significant for your growth in faith something vital in your walk as you decide to get out from the slavery of sin and i hope that i shared something important to keep your lamp keep shining in the trouble times like this and i hope i shared something certain in time of uncertainties and i hope that i share something sure for you to raise a hallelujah for such a times like this and once again thank you so much for spending time with me until next time, yes, willing, shalom.